Hi there, welcome to the third episode of our homeschool history. So, um, so far, if you have been following along, um, I did a 20 minute episode one, and then I'm gonna keep them from now on to about 10 to 12 minutes, the same as my other episodes um, of different series and so forth. So, so far, we learned that um, 38 years ago, uh, this fall, we began homeschooling my younger sister. So you'll have to go back and listen to how that all happened. And that was very unusual. But anyway, it was um, an exciting year and it really went well. I'm going to tell more about that today. Um, but also just bring you up to speed, kind of uh, if you haven't gotten the math yet, because um, it's very, it's a very interesting math. So I have been She's here for kindergarten today with Papa. So anyway, I have been, um, I'm kind of an early person when it comes to my age and things and, I, and, I, and things doing things and stuff like that. And it's not, it's not like a braggy way. It is just because I was the second born in my family, but I was the first born girl out of five siblings. And I was, my older brother was not a first born type. And so I was very firstborn, very type A, very um, took care of younger siblings uh, during like all the time while my mom worked. I mean, it was, and so I have always been like ahead of my time, ahead of my age. And um, like even when I got married, even when I got engaged, well, let me back up. So by, by talking about early, I was um, 14 when... Uh, Ray Baby told me he wanted to marry me. Yeah, 14 years old. I was 16 when I got engaged, like fully, totally, really, honestly engaged. Like not like a promise ring or something like that, but like my wedding set. I got my actual engagement ring when I was a junior in high school and when I was 16 years old. Yeah. And then um, I turned around and got married a year later when I was 17, but I turned 18 the next day. And so that was very young to get married, just just barely 18. And then um, a few days after I got married, I started college and I just turned 18 and I just graduated a week before. So I graduated from high school one weekend. The next weekend I got married, a couple of days later I started college. Yeah, it was just, it's bizarre. So the math on this whole, uh, 38 years ago, we began homeschooling my younger sister. The math on that is that I was 20, I, a year and a half later after I got married, I had my first child at 19 and a half. So yeah, like a year and a half after I was married and I was still in college. So then I finished college while um, he was a baby and a toddler. And then remarkably, I began homeschooling my younger sister when I graduated from college and I graduated from college early because I went year round and um, they had these correspondence classes that you could do at Ball State and you could do them like on your own kind of timetable. It was way different than now. So I would just like take a class and do it all weekend then take another class and do it all weekend. It was craziness. Um, so anyway, I got, I graduated early and um, by that time, I had a one and a half year old toddler and I began homeschooling when I was 20. So <laughs> that is how I'm almost 60 and I homeschooled 38 and a half years ago. It's, it's just crazy to think of. So anyway, I just wanted to put a little perspective in it because I was very young. I was very young when I started homeschooling my sister. I had a one and a half year old. I also at that time began, became a covering for Ohio. Now, I talked in episode two about the laws in Indiana, and I talked about how I, um, how, you know, people were scattering in Indiana and they were like starting Christian schools and things like that. And we were the only people whom I knew who were homeschooling in Indiana after all of that happened. Not in Indiana, in my <coughs> town, in my town after that happened. Went to the first homeschool convention, talked about that last time. I was a vendor for one of the biggest homeschool providers at the time, um, Homegrown Kids, it's with Dr. Raymond Moore, for his products um, when I was 20. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, it was... It's ready to read. Disney Princess Tangle, a dream come true. All right, we have a story reader going here, so... Can you take it out? Sorry about that. Okay, we have um, talking books. Always use talking books. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about everything that I ever did, whether it was good, bad, or indifferent. Um, so, um, so at age 20, so the law in Indiana, like I said last episode, was equivalent instruction from age 17 through 16. And there were some places and some school districts who were willing to actually take that on, but most were not because what is equivalent instruction, right? And so then in Ohio, though, their laws were much stricter, but, and I lived on the Indiana Ohio line. So uh, even though Ohio was much stricter, we were with the Ohio homeschoolers because the people in our town quit homeschooling. And I was a covering uh, an umbrella uh, certified teacher for these Ohio homeschoolers when I was 20 years old. That's just bizarre when I think about it. <laughs> I don't know how that all happened, but somehow it did. So um, so I learned about homeschooling, like I read 10 books when I was, when the, the summer I turned 20, when I graduated from college, I read 10 homeschooling books, everything that was out there. Started going to homeschool conventions and, and seminars, Greg Harris, immediately. We started going to anything that we could, that we could go to and learn. So, back to the topic at hand, which is our first year. So our first year when I was 20 and I had a one and a half year old and we homeschooled my sister under the circumstances that I talked about in the last episode. And so I just wanted to give a shed a little light on that year um, because it was way different than it is now. So I mentioned that we got our curriculum from Dr. Raymond Moore, Homegrown Kids. And at the time, it was very tailored. And so that was really great. So one of the things that uh, that was really good for Lisa, because she was cognitively disabled, or she had cognitive disabilities, that's the proper way, I'm sorry about that. She had cognitive disabilities, and she was mentally, um, she had mental disabilities. So uh, her level was like moderate mental handicap, moderate mental disability. It's changed names uh, through the years, but that's what it was in my ed psych classes at the time. And so because of that, even though she was in eighth grade, she was like second through <coughs> like fourth grade on almost everything. <coughs> and so uh, they took all, they, I gave her a little pretest and they took all that into consideration and they tailor made a curriculum for her at that level. Now, I think that's really unique because now that we do these homeschool classes and everything, they're completely geared. Like we have some, you know, 14 year olds who are in level A, which would normally be like a fourth and fifth grade level, but they are in level A because that's their writing level. And the same thing with my husband in math and science, like he might have a junior in high school who's just doing junior high science or a senior in high school is just doing his biology. And so that that's kind of unique because we also tailor our classes in those same ways, uh, not according to what grade they're in or not according to how old they are, but rather according to their um, prerequisites or what they've had before or what level they're ready for in terms of reading and writing also. So that was very unique. Um, another thing that um, we did with Lisa was we focused on basics and this really came through in the curriculum that we had from Homegrown Kids. So it was like all of her math facts. We had the pro this program called Math It, and it did all the math facts, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, in a very systematic way with tricks and all of those things. Maybe that's where I got my love for tricks right off the bat, right? Um, and uh, so that was very like basic. And I'm so grateful for that because Lisa needed basic skills. Like to go to become an adult now, you know, she doesn't have a driver's license, but she can live alone and uh, she can do a lot of things for herself, but tailoring it to the fact that she did have cognitive disabilities and to the fact that she needed basics was really, really important and something that um, Dr. Moore really focused on when, uh, you know, they designed, they laid out her curriculum. So basics in um, that. Also, 
um, they knew, because Dr. Moore's a genius, he knew how to get Lisa up in her reading. Now, my undergraduate was in elementary education. I had not started on my master's yet in reading specialist, but I did know, you know, that repetition was going to be key and that she wasn't reading enough in school. And so they were very big on giving us um, a lot of readers and things to uh, for her to read at her reading level. So, you know, she may have been reading, you know, like fourth grade, third grade, fourth grade level books, even though she was in eighth grade. But we had her do so much silent reading each day, so much reading out loud to me each day, and then so much listening to me read each day because of using that uh, listening level of reading to get her up. We also focused a lot on uh, skills because she was very shy. She wouldn't like go into the post office and buy a stamp. She wouldn't go into the grocery and pick up a gallon of milk if mom needed to drop her off or something. Uh, she was afraid of people. Uh, she'd been bullied, as I said, uh, because of her disabilities. And so we really, really honed in on, like I took her to art class. I took her to the Y. We took her to church. We got her playing her, clair her um, flute at church, even though she wasn't really... Um, you know, that far advanced in her flute. She had done like seventh grade. She'd done one year of flute. Um, but we had a flute teacher for her. So she had a lesson um, that continued on. So she played with the youth band, her flute at church, um, child care at church, anything we could do to get her out of her comfort zone. By the end of that year, she was going in to get stamps, going in to pick up groceries, helping us. We had small group at our house all the time. She helped us serve food and, and it was just really, really remarkable. It was a very, very good year. It was very hard, very, very hard because um, Lisa was very spoiled. And my mom, you know, when Lisa didn't like something or didn't want to do something, my mom would, you know, intervene and say, well, I don't think she should really have to do that or whatever. And I knew what she needed to do, you know, both because of my background, but also because of, you know, our curriculum from Dr. Moore. And so there were a lot of trying times during that year. I always say, if you think it's hard to homeschool your kids, you should have homeschooled your sister. Um, but it was a very, very successful year. And she went on to high school and she got a, a, you know, an altered diploma, so to speak, but she went all four years to high school, uh, just a really different person. So um, I was homeschooling since I was uh, 20. I was doing the stuff. I was just, um, I believed in it and I still do. And thank you for joining me for another episode of our homeschool history.